Now, the fourth pillar, active imagination, um, is a feature of Jungian work that, in my mind, uh, unfortunately, uh, in, I'd say, the last 50 years, uh, fell away to some extent from the centrality of Jungian practice. And there were many reasons for this in the history of the, of the growth of the field of analytical psychology, and I'll, I'll mention some of those things. But I would say in the last five or six, five, maybe even 10 years, it's been making a comeback. And um, I want to emphasize it as one of the main features of, of, of Jungian work in whatever form it takes, and there are various forms that active imagination can take, as you will hear. Um, and the reason for that is that it is really the, the key to opening up a dialectical interaction with between conscious and unconscious aspects of the psyche. And I'll say some more about the, the theoretical uh, reasons that, that Jung felt it was so important to include active imagination within uh, his analytic practice. And the two rules are these. Number one, when you clear your mind and make a, an empty space, a blank space there, Gesheyen lesson, and you say to yourself, I'm just going to let come whatever comes, okay? That's the preparation, uh, Wu Wei, and uh, you, you prepare yourself to receive. Rule number one, whatever comes, receive it. I said that before already. Whatever comes, receive it. Because once you start judging and editing and second guessing, you destroy the whole thing. It won't work. So that's rule number one. Block the editor out. Forget about it. what's good enough. Just let it happen and receive what comes. And then once it's come, once something is there, and I'll tell you a funny story about that as I conclude. Once it's there, um, second rule is, if it moves, follow it. If it moves, follow it. Uh, when something moves, something speaks, something starts doing something autonomously, that's where it's alive. And that's where you need to go. Uh, a leaf moves. Uh, a dog appears and wags its tail. Somebody speaks. Wherever it's alive, that's the place to engage because that's where the psyche is beginning to show itself. The unconscious, the autonomous psyche is coming in and you will be surprised. So wherever you're surprised, something moves, something acts, follow it. Whatever comes, receive it. If it moves, follow it. And if you do this uh, for a, um, a number of days regularly and with some discipline, clear your mind at, on day one, receive whatever comes, stay with it for 20 or 30 minutes, stop it, write down what happened. On day two, go back to where you stopped on day one. Again, now, back to where you stopped on day one. On day two of, of Jung's active imagination, which I didn't tell you about, he went back to look for Solomon and Elijah. It was hard to get there, but he found them finally. So go back to where you stopped on day one and sit there and wait until something moves. Again, follow it, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, stop, write it down. Do this for 30 days. And at the end of 30 days, you will have a place and you will have a set of characters that are relatively stable. The difference about, between an active imagination environment and a dream environment is active imagination is reliable and stable. A dream environment is mercurial. It changes every night. You can't predict it. You have no idea what's going to happen tonight in your dreams. You can try to program it. Sometimes it's hit or miss. You might be lucky once or twice. But generally, it's very autonomous and it always surprises you. Active imagination is always there. It's a stable environment. And after 20 or 30 days in doing this in a disciplined fashion and following these rules, you will have more or less what Jung had. You will have a set of characters. You'll have a place you can go to, people you can talk to get their advice. You can take your dreams in there and talk, discuss them with these characters if you want to, or talk about your troubles and problems, or meditate, or you can do any number of things.
Uh, Murray, it occurs to me that uh, uh, Jesus, when he uh, went in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, and then there occurred, appeared to him uh, the devil, and he got in conversation with the devil in a vision that he was most likely involved in active imagination. And uh, how does that how does that feel to you? <laughs> yes, I, I absolutely agree. Um, I think any time you start speaking with the spirits, uh, I mean, what what is the devil? It's, uh, uh, the the invisible becomes visible. We would say it's a manifestation of a content from the unconscious. It was, uh, you know, it was a temptation. Jesus uh, was tempted to power because he had uh, he had all these amazing gifts, and uh, he had a, a, a very strong sense of himself. So naturally, you would expect that he would be tempted to power. And lo and behold, what manifests itself to him when he goes into the desert? Of course, you have to go into the desert because in the desert, there's nothing to distract you. And there the unconscious can manifest, right? When you go into the darkness and, and there, there aren't objects around you or there isn't, uh, it, you aren't in the middle of a city, there the, um, the unconscious can make itself known. And it did so in such a decisive and explicit way. It's one of the most vivid um, moments of, 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 uh, of, of the... Um, could say of the spiritual dimension of Jesus' uh, uh, existence on earth, those conversations that he had with the devil. I mean, another moment is the moment of his transfiguration, when again, the, the light side appears and, and, uh, and the people around him also see that. So, I mean, there are both sides. You could say when he's in prayer with and, 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 uh, and his father reveals himself to him, or a voice appears. That's a kind of active imagination. We would say that's active imagination today. Uh, you hear a voice, you see an image, you have a dialogue and a conversation with the invisible. And um, and of course, this really was um, the major turning point in in Jesus' mission: turning down the invitation to power that the devil offered him. Uh, if he hadn't done that, if, if he hadn't had that experience, if the, if the shadow had remained unconscious to him, uh, he wouldn't have been able to carry out his mission. The uh, problem with active imagination and the uh, tendency sometimes to slip into uh, fabricating or um, uh, yeah, yeah. Projecting into the image and you know having the image respond in the way that the ego would respond uh, that seems to be uh, particularly um, uh, difficult sometimes to allow the autonomy or allow this uh, objectivity to come in. Could you speak to that, please? Yes, that's why um, you know this. Um, I wanted to emphasize that. Uh, quality of Gashan lesson or Wu Wei, that it really is a dialogue. Because uh, people have often told me when they start doing active imagination, it feels like they're just making up everything. And they probably are. It's mostly coming out of the ego and they, they want to. It's, it's like having some vivid daydreams and you can spin out yarns. And if you've got a good imagination, it goes all over the map. Uh, you're traveling around the world or into outer space or who knows what adventures you're having. Um, I try to slow that down. I try to say, uh, stop for a moment and just let a figure speak to you. And until the figure shows some autonomy and, and you really have the feeling they're surprising you, they are, they are giving you something that you genuinely didn't make up. It doesn't come out of the ego. Like in Jung's example, she named herself uh, Salome, and he named himself Elijah. That surprised him. 